we are. Um, um, and I would like to share with you um, the state of play in, in declaring infrastructure. Um, yesterday, you've had a, uh, the, the opportunity to uh, attend a section on a session on um, the technical part of the infrastructure. I won't dive into that part too deeply, but of course, it's all interconnected. The first thing I would like to <clears throat> bring to your attention is that as of last year, we're working under a new strategy that has uh, formally been approved uh, by the General Assembly and, of course, uh, prepared in, um, in consultation with all the relevant bodies within Clarin. Here we um, um, have included a, a focus on uh, a certain element in, in the dynamics that we all live with, namely the datafication of uh, everyday life, which is bringing a lot of digital resources, uh, digital data sets, so uh, machine actionable materials um, that are capturing the dynamics of uh, 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 contemporary, uh, but also um, uh, historical uh, dynamics. And um, we felt that uh, it would be good to keep that uh, at the back of our minds in uh, working on the further e uh, evolution and development of the infrastructure. Um, it's a topic that, um, um, that, of course, is not only bringing new challenges for, for data science, for uh, responsible methods for dealing with, uh, with data, but of course is also calling for uh, all forms of uh, interaction uh, with scholars from very many different domains. So the context of this data is, um, uh, of these various data types uh, um, uh, call for wide involvement of uh, the various disciplines in the social sciences and humanities and, and even beyond. It's also a topic that brings a lot of challenges for uh, where to look for potential impact, both societal uh, and scholarly impact. Um, and uh, our infrastructure is very suited for uh, working on such uh, an overarching theme because first of all, within Europe, we are now with um, many, many countries, um, uh, 24 actually. Um, South Africa is the, 20, uh, the 25th country. And as you see on this image, um, um, uh, the countries are, are um, uh, also maintaining um, the little dots, which are uh, the centers that, that Clarin uh, um, actually is running on. So Clarin Eric is the central organization, is, uh, would be meaningless without the involvement uh, of uh, the centers and, and the nodes. And um, as you can see, we have over, 60 uh, registered centers of which 25 are data centers that have been certified by an independent organization court trust seal um, on top of that we have a network of uh, case centers and and things that we call c centers and together they uh, uh, make it possible to uh, offer uh, services uh, uh, in a federated way so um, our central platform gives access to fair data and, and chainable tools for processing the data um, uh, and for depositing uh, options. Um, but it's, it's due to the work that is done in the countries that this central service offer has become feasible. This all is strongly aligned with the open science agenda, uh, again, with a strong focus on, on interoperability at all layers. So it's not only about interoperability of services or interoperability of data, but it's, of course, also about interoperability of terminology, uh, of modes of collaboration, etc. This is where, um, uh, uh, where we are standing right now uh, with the most recent um, uh, entrance of uh, re-entrance, you could say, uh, of, uh, of Belgium in, in the network. And um, still a few countries to go, as you can see. But we have contacts with, uh, with people in all countries uh, on this map, especially if we don't be, if we are not too precise on the eastern part. Um, so Clarence is very well positioned to, uh, to work on uh, uh, the uh, potential for impact of all the rich data sets, including the annotation layers that are available um, 
in uh, with a focus on crossing borders of languages and, and countries. Um, a very, very important vehicle for building up this, this mode of collaboration in the domain of social sciences and humanities um, is the project SHOCK, which started uh, uh, three years ago. It's uh, an Horizon 2020 project with funding um, that is meant uh, for the project partners to work on um, alignment with the emerging European Open Science Cloud. So it's an infrastructural initiative. Uh, it's um, uh, working on several themes that are uh, very dear to, uh, to Claren and also uh, topics for which we already have a very strong starting point. So it's federation of resources at the level of social sciences and humanities. Um, the uh, envisaged vehicle for that uh, is the SSH open marketplace, which for which there is now a first release. Uh, which will have a further release later this year, and it will be worked on in the coming years, even after the project as well. Um, there's also work on methodological framework for a certain, uh, um, uh, not uh, so simple issues. For example, the handling of heterogeneous data, um, the combination of methods, uh, the work on mul multimedia. Uh, another topic is work on fair models for sensitive data, uh, which is uh, a topic that cannot easily be uh, fully solved, but it's definitely interesting to work on interoperability, even of sensitive data, that data that have to be protect, protected because the uh, subjects or the, the people expressing uh, their thoughts or uh, ideas or their mood in terms of, of language, um, these people sometimes need to be protected for uh, open against fully open access, but still interoperability is important to make sure that progress can be made on the uh, various models of analysis of those data types. Uh, then there are inno innovative services for uh, translation being worked on, machine translation. And there is a lot of attention for the training and education of researchers in the domain of SSH in working with uh, the service offer of the various SSH research infrastructures. Um, and this, it's also a vehicle for further collaboration with the GLAM sector. Um, so maybe it's good to mention the research infrastructures that have the lead here. They are, uh, apart from Clarin, uh, CESDA, DARIA, SHARE, and ESS. And there's also a role for ARIS, uh, the upcoming research infrastructure for heritage science. Clarin is participating in this project with the central team, but also with several of the centers uh, in the various countries. Uh, another very important uh, initiative that has been uh, addressed already several times is the Clarin Resource Families. It's a strategic pillar for data harmonization, especially for metadata harmonization. And if that is uh, um, done well, we all know there will be more potential for collaboration across national consortia. Um, and there will be more possibilities for disciplinary and multidisciplinary research agendas, um, because uh, many of them require a comparative perspectives with the crossing of um, borders of languages and regions. Another topic uh, for which you have already received a lot of information yesterday and today is the Parliament project, uh, um, a, a project that we recently uh, decided to call our flagship project. Um, you can find the link on the slides that, that will also be, um, uh, I suppose, uh, again in, in the chat and uh, the slides will be made available after this uh, presentation. It's covering uh, currently, after the first release, already 17 languages, and uh, it will continue to run uh, at least until 23. Then uh, another uh, vehicle for um, impact and, and outreach to, wider, to a wider set of disciplinary uh, communities is the Claren Ambassador Program. Um, that uh, wasn't the most 
vibrant element in our program in, the, uh, in Corona times, but we will relaunch it uh, very soon with new ambassadors. Uh, there's a lot of uh, activities uh, aimed at, uh, at uptake uh, online. So uh, we organized several webinars uh, uh, on sp very specific topics. Uh, there were tutorials, uh, for example, uh, to make librarians aware of how they can help their customers, so to speak, on how to use and when to use clan resources. There was the um, uh, special uh, uh, track in the Helsinki Digital Humanities Hackathon on parliamentary debates. And there was also one on uh, uh, survey data in collaboration with the wage indicator team. Um, we uh, revisited our uh, uh, offer for funding and support. There is now um, uh, work on um, a, a training suite uh, that we call Teaching with Claren. You've heard about the first um, uh, materials that have been uh, imported there with uh, 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 triggered by the fact that we have an award for this right now, but we hope that this set of teaching materials will grow in the future. Uh, we also have the possibility to um, uh, have grants for people that want to contribute to the trainer network program. There is support for virt virtual events and we uh, launched a seed grant for uh, the preparation of uh, Horizon Europe proposals. Another important development in the past year was the uh, relaunch of the website. You've heard about it um, before. It is uh, supposed to be better geared towards uh, the diversity of services and audiences, um, not just an entrance point for the technical services, but also uh, it plays a very important role in exchanging information on the, the expertise and knowledge and resources uh, available beyond what can be found on uh, via the VLO and via um, the overview of uh, resource families. It's more easy to navigate and it has a more contemporary look and feel. The newest addition uh, to uh, the newest uh, uh, section that was uh, added to uh, the, the website is the, a section on Clarin impact stories. Uh, it is uh, meant to grow into a very rich resource where stories about how uh, the service offer of Clarin has led to impact uh, uh, either in the realm of, uh, of scholarly work, uh, so uh, scientific excellence in terms of the S3 uh, framework, but, uh, but also in terms of impact on teaching and training. And uh, we also hope to be able to present their stories about societal impact and collaboration with industry in the end. It is um, also meant to be um, contextualization for or high quality publications. So to make them, so to make the content of these publications also known um, for wider audiences by transforming the, um, uh, the narrative into something that um, people beyond the academic world can also appreciate. Um, it's coupled, the stories that will be coupled to uh, other formats and materials and, and they're also inspired by um, the information that we have in Tour de Clarin. Um, as said, um, the, the impact stories are meant to uh, uh, highlight impact in along various dimensions. So based on this overview of uh, what we uh, were able to achieve uh, in the most recent year, um, uh, it's also good to look ahead. And of course, uh, many of the elements that I mentioned uh, are the stepping stones for that. Uh, again, there is the strategy that we take as a starting point um, with the uh, observation that the ever increasing datafication uh, is bringing more and more um, machine actionable materials that we could um, uh, make accessible and actionable by providing tools and methodologies for the scholarly domains that we uh, that we support which is both which is a very wide range it's including everything in the realm of data science 
um, the technical parts, but also um, the um, models for uh, hybrid intelligence, um, for interaction models uh, that allow uh, researchers from uh, the humanities area to uh, uh, continue uh, or maybe gradually transform the existing workflows and, and uh, uh, traditions and, and culture of working and um, make progress and um, work towards new discoveries and impact. Um, in order to uh, increase uh, the potential for impact, uh, we will work more and more on uh, the alignment with, with um, disciplinary research agendas and, and collaborating with uh, mission-driven research initiatives, so uh, research programs that uh, aim to contribute to um, solutions for society, uh, for societal issues, for policy issues, for um, uh, the kind of things that, uh, that are also um, part of what is now becoming more and more known as the uh, uh, sustainable development goals of um, uh, the United Nations. Um, within Europe, uh, there is ample funding for that kind of work under the so-called Pillar 2 projects. Um, and we also focus on, on the cost actions that uh, we, we would like to um, set up a structured collaboration. We've already done a few things there, but this is definitely a model that we would like to um, uh, uh, see evolve in the future. Um, it also means that we will work on, on applications and, and workflows for, for certain specific uh, um, impact-driven or mission-driven um, uh, research topics. This implies the development of, of tools, for example, for studying and informing policy responses to the global, global crisis, as I already mentioned uh, this, uh, um, this is also coinciding with the sustainable development goals. You can think here of climate change, migration, COVID. There are many, many um, uh, research topics um, that uh, that uh, can be studied only uh, by uh, can can only be studied effectively by also taking into account all the language materials on social media, in newspapers, in historical. Uh, archives, um, and here is a role for uh, declaring research infrastructure. Uh, but of course, we need to do that in alignment with um, with researchers um, that master the uh, uh, the research dimension of these topics. Um, a similar um, angle is the study of mental health conditions. So we will have a panel on this tomorrow morning. Um, definitely, we need to. Uh, investigate here the requirements for research infrastructural support so that we can do more than we are currently offering. And of course, we want to explore models for innovation and collaboration with industry where relevant. Um, so what do we have to make that happen? Now, again, um, a continuation of the Clarion Research Families Initiative, um, partly with some uh, uh, automation in, in the uh, implementation of the harmonization efforts. Uh, there is uh, a call uh, um, out. Um, if you think you can contribute with a data set or data type that, um, that you have been working on, there is uh, some funding available. We will continue, um, as said, the work on, on Parliament. Um, there is a, a team ready to run this uh, through the second phase, as also just explained in the video by um, uh, Thomas Erwig. Um, and uh, there is, of course, the continuation of various action lines to aim um, at a wider outreach, the ambassadors program, uh, the capacity at Clarion office for virtual events, uh, the focus on support for teaching and education, Etc. This is not at all a complete list, but um, if you have questions, um, I'm happy to answer them soon. So a few more um, bullet type of uh, uh, descriptions of, um, of our agenda for the, co the coming period. Um, 
an important thing is to make sure that the various clarion nodes, so the centers and the, um, and the academic uh, institutes and the uh, um, uh, cultural heritage centers that play a role in the various consortia, um, they, need, they need support. So and, uh, the, the technical infrastructure uh, is well designed for that, but we also think that the coordination among the case centers uh, the knowledge centers with expertise on very specific topics could be improved and we would like to see our website to evolve into a hub for knowledge exchange with landing pages for all kinds of topics including uh, technical innovation and, and methodological frameworks including um, uh, angles into uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and and the specification the, the specific application domains that i already mentioned we also um, will continue our collaboration with the other infrastructural initiative in the landscape that we're working in. For those of you um, who may not be so much aware of that, there is a lot of things happening coupled to the notion of the European Open Science Cloud, for which there is now a legal entity, and Claren has joined that uh, legal entity, which is called the EELS Association as a member. But the whole, um, um, the dynamics in that landscape also uh, comes with a lot of dynamics in the national context. So many countries are now refocusing again on strengthening their national research infrastructure, uh, which means that um, uh, we are all looking for a proper balance between um, uh, what's happening uh, uh, at the national level, what uh, uh, the uh, topical research infrastructures, how the topical research infrastructures such as Clarin um, can benefit from those developments and can be in alignment with those developments. But on the other hand, there's also the need to stay focused on the disciplinary dynamics. And which is of course, never something that stops at the borders. That's typically something that you do in an international context. Uh, and this is where, uh, we see a, a very important role for the continued collaboration in the context of the uh, SSH cluster. So the parties that collaborate in shock and that will run the SSH open marketplace in the coming period. Again, with a strong link to the so-called glam sector. So galleries, libraries, archives, musea, museums, uh, parties like Europeana and Libre, we are already collaborating with play an important role there. And there are also a number of other platforms for language data um, that we are aligned with uh, or collaborate with on specific topics, um, to name a few, uh, the European Open Language Grid, uh, Humming Face, but also, for example, the initiative recently started in Australia for language resources. So there's also the international dimension. In terms of organization, we have uh, a board of directors. There's some dynamics there too. So this year, Francesca Fontini uh, joined as a new member. By the end of this year, there will be a vacancy because Andreas Witt uh, will step back. Um, there's also a vacancy typo there uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for my position, the position of executive director. Um, uh, this will, um, of course, be announced once there is, uh, the, the new names will be announced once they are known. We're also looking forward to uh, the celebration of the 10th anniversary of Claire and Eric, which will take place in the spring and summer of next year. There is a book in preparation for that. Uh, there will be some online events uh, for, for which you can find announcements on the website. And then, of course, next year, we hope um, to have, again, uh, a Clarin Annual Conference, the 11th edition. Um, big question mark whether we can return to the face-to-face -face format, but um, there's some hopes that we will at least be able to meet more often face-to-face -face in the coming year. I close with this uh, overview of funding and support opportunities for which you can find uh, uh, all kinds of details on the website. 